Hmm? So, uh, welcome to our uh, second uh, COVID-19 Western Balkans Dialogue. I'm very glad to be talking to Igor Stix today, who is a writer and a social scientist and political activist, uh, and who's uh, joining me from Belgrade. Uh, and what we want to talk about uh, is a little bit about kind of state-society relations, what the, the crisis and the government response means, what the kind of what it tells us about society about the countries and i guess one thing you also brought up which we'll talk about is uh is this the end of the post-socialist era uh or not or had it did it end already 10 years ago or so in a certain way how important is this moment really uh or is it just kind of shining a light on what has been going on for a longer period of time but maybe we'll start with uh, Igor. tell me a little bit about how you see the role of you know kind of the state, what does the state look like in these moments of crisis? Mm. Uh, well, obviously it, it depends where, where we are or where we happen to be when the, when the pandemic uh, hit us. Uh, um, uh, it, it's, now I'm speaking from Belgrade, so clearly at the European periphery, in a peripheral state that's been weakened over the last uh, 30 years. And that of course people still, um, believing it is still institutions are there people need some authority some guidelines and we could see that that uh, on on one hand uh, the the state is 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 quite weak it cannot really respond as actively uh, as it should uh, that the resources are, are are almost empty especially in the in the periphery where there's some some uh, um, essential it items been missing uh, or, or or so basically the state stop producing them. Oh, 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 oh. So, so on one hand, we, we see this, and on the other, we see how important any kind of authority is in, the, in this situation. So, so uh, it depends really that how you manage this kind of pandemic in this situation depends on people in power. And this is why we face the, the different scenarios uh, in Slovenia, in Croatia, or in Bosnia and, and Serbia. So who is, where is the place of authority? People ask themselves, and uh, uh, can I trust these people? So this is, uh, it seems that in Croatia, they managed to do it slightly better than in Serbia, where the management of the crisis, especially from the beginning and, and, and even un until today, has been, um, been quite chaotic. And also the messages that been, that, that been sent from from the top uh, has been quite contradictory. So we got um, uh, ju ju just one example of how, how the authority is important is that, that people do respond to what the state says. Say, okay, now don't go out, don't do this or do, don't do that. Now it's another question if someone constantly comes to TV and tells you it's your responsibility, actually I didn't do anything wrong, it's actually you, but that's an another issue. Uh, but for instance, uh, uh, already uh, two days ago, uh, they basically announced after four day total lockdown uh, that they're going to ease the, 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 the regime and already people are, people are out. So they got the signal both times. So it's, it seems that people really want to trust, trust the authority still, whoever is, is in power, but the problem is how you manage this relationship of, of confidence. So is it is it I mean it strikes me as an you know observer from a distance that there's a lot that this relationship especially in Serbia is one of very much as you said authoritarian in a certain way I mean beyond the nature of the regime but just that it's communicated in terms of orders in terms of what people should or should not do but it's not very well explained and that in a certain way it's it's reflecting kind of the state doesn't trust its own citizens I mean this is kind of the if you hear what you also alluded to is the way in which the uh, you know, the, the citizens are kind of scolded like little children in a certain way for not behaving properly. So it fe one feels like a very, you know, kind of paternalistic in a certain way uh, state. Is, is that also your perception? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it's, you know, we, we know that they, there used to be states that um, could be authoritarian or paternalistic, but that you can somehow trust. And now you have people who behave, behave paternalistically, but completely changing their policies from one day to, to, to the next, uh, uh, being, being 
horribly irresponsibly irresponsibly in, in in this respect and then accusing others to behave irresponsibly so this is not the way uh, uh really to to go through the, through this crisis and certainly i hope i hope that uh, that in better times we're going to have a, a bit of discussion about it i mean there is a lot of discussion uh, about what, what is going on but it's still we still live under the state of um, of emergency and therefore that does not open up uh, a much much space really for a, for a, some kind of a, a democratic dialogue uh, uh, the problem will be if uh, that, that 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 maybe we should we should think in different categories well there are states that are usually recognized or they are called the republic or the kingdom of or whatever but actually we we deal with some kind of regimes and in some kind of administrations that are trying to figure out how to to manage society, very often influenced by 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 private interest, political, economical, criminal, uh, and uh, that there is uh, in, in this respect we 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 cannot really count on the state to be there and to really do these elementary functions. Uh, and I think that people lost lost really uh, trust in that. Now, of course, the question is why they still believe in, uh, if they lost trust in real institutions, uh, so that it means that they have a, a, a real sense of what is going on, why many of them still trust in, in myths and stories, uh, especially national myths and nationalist uh, stories and imagination, uh, the why every time you bring, bring back the national question, the question of survival of your nation, of borders, of territories, why you manage to silence, silence everybody. So it's, it's, it's quite, a, quite a tricky, tricky one to, to really understand and to grasp this. I mean, isn't it maybe also that exactly because the state is weak and people might not might be suspicious of it that in fact these stories even become more important because you can't the institutions don't provide you with something to believe in. So what else do you believe in, right? I mean, mm -hmm. what is the other ideas or the other concepts you could you yeah. could invest yourself into? So mm -hmm. I mean, I guess I'm wondering, you know, do you, do you see this crisis that as an accelerator of something which has been going on, you know, before or, or uh, does it, you know, make it something visible or how do you, you know, and uh, how do you see, I mean, you said you, you know, you hope or you, 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 you believe that there needs to be a conversation afterwards. Do you see there being that there will be a space even for having this kind of conversation afterwards so, or how would it look like? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, 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 it's hard to, it's hard to tell. What we could certainly see the, is that there, there will be consequences of this situation. Some clearly are global, some are local, uh, uh, but people are going to ask questions and uh, what happened and why, what thing happened in that way and not the, the other way. And of course, they're going to, to look for, um, for someone to blame. And this will be rightly so, the government, people in power. And uh, I think that many things that we could see the governments, uh, not only in Serbia, but in the region are doing is kind of to pre Try, trying preemptively to to divert the attention towards other other subjects and also to say we did everything actually citizens did not respect or international community did not help us or or it's 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 not something we created we actually bravely fought through this war as they call call, call it very often and and therefore uh, we should now win the next election so therefore we should be trusted now the question is. Of course, uh, are people going to believe it or are they going to say, look, okay, now pandemic is over. Now we are facing the reality of total social and economic crisis. Uh, we can't, we are frustrated and we can't wait for, for the change any longer. Now, I'm not, I'm not sure what's, what's going to really happen, but that there will be a lot of frustration and anger and uh, uh, it, it's, it's certainly true. The, the question whether there will be channels to express this thing. So do you have political channels to express it? Elections, streets, squares, demonstrations, conflicts, uh, uh, what not. Uh, and and whether, how we are going to actually go through this year. Um, um, so so this, will, this will be a challenge in the, in the, certainly in the Balkan societies in 2020. Mm -hmm. But I mean, how can you, I mean, because you've been also, you know, you're following, uh, you know, kind of, you, you've been an activist yourself, you're following a kind of activist movement. So how do you see even 
uh, you know, what are the kind of venues of, of articulating um, grievances and also can they be um, transnational? Because I mean, again, I mean, the, the, what we talked about, the, the weakness of states, the states which have been, you know, depleted in many ways um, for the last 20, 30 years through multiple crises. I mean, you know, people have been joking that for millennials, this is the second crisis, while people are from, you know, have said from, you know, from the post yugoslav space, well, you know, spare me. I mean, this is, you know, I don't know, the X, the, the 10th crisis uh, since uh, for 30 years. I mean, tell me the years when things were quote unquote normal. Uh, um, so in that sense, these are all very similar, whether, I mean, the response might be different now in Croatia and Serbia and Bosnia and Herzegovina, but, you know, the kind of fundamental structural uh, bases are similar right so mm -hmm. so what kind of space is there for uh, you know kind of finding a language or finding a way to to talk about this and to organize um across the region maybe or or learn from each mm -hmm. other what are the ways to even articulate uh, mm -hmm. this uh, at the moment or in the in the coming in the coming mm -hmm. months or year well, uh, over over last ten years, what we could certainly say that the, there's been a lot of activism, a lot of s social movements, so that the society did respond to the 2008 crisis that opened up many possibilities, at least discussion: what kind of system do we do we want, what kind of society we live in, what kind of democracy we want, all these basic questions that we, that's been asked elsewhere. And luckily, these movements did happen. Of course, there was a bit of disappointment because this movement couldn't really solve the structural problems of these societies, uh, nor they could actually take power uh, just, just like that. Uh, they really were uh, true uh, social movements without, uh, without much, uh, uh, many attempts to actually enter into the institutions apart from Slovenia and also partially Croatia. So certainly there will be this idea that now we, uh, you, you can't change things just, just by, by protest movements or by occupying certain buildings, but you have to go into the institutions. And there, 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 will be, there we're going to see, in spite of all similarities, a lot of differences. Why it was possible to, to do uh, more, um, uh, more uh, active, actually enter into more active politics and influence it in Slovenia rather than in Croatia, let alone Serbia or, or Bosnia. There, these local differences will, will play out very well. We could expect uh, uh, that in Zagreb there will be a movement, there is already a movement actually uh, to contest uh, the current mayor and, and, and his rule there. Uh, we could expect that s some space might open up for those who will, uh, who will actually switch the, 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 the public uh, um, attention towards social issues that are becoming more and more prominent. They've, they've been prominent already, but now they will be certainly very, very prominent. Uh, uh, what, what, you can, can, what can you do in Bosnia? This was the, always the question we ask ourselves because you have a peace agreement and you have a very small space to actually express a different way of understanding politics, a um, situation that in a way is similar to, to, to Lebanon, where we witnessed a, a, an extraordinary civic movement that's been stopped by this pandemic, but that might resume. And, and in Serbia, clearly uh, things are very uh, polarizing. And, and also it seems that there is one regime and there is one person on, on, on top of this regime, uh, so that things might be either him or, or us. And so it means that, 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 that uh, some more sophisticated social movements with, uh, with, with fine understanding of socioeconomic issues might be forced actually to join hands with people that you don't want joining hands or even shaking hands with <laughs> in order to, to make some change. Kind of. Well, at least at the moment, you don't have to shake hands with anybody. So <laughs> that, <laughs> makes exactly. things, that makes things easier. Um, but you were, you were also pointing out saying, you know, is this, uh, you know, people have all talked about, you know, the post-socialist period, you know, um, what is, you know, the, the, the era after 1990, you know, for the post-Yugoslav space, 91, yeah. you know, the post-Yugoslav space, and, you know, to some degree, it seemed like 2008 was a turning point in many ways, a point when the belief that the kind of uh, simple pattern of emulation neoliberal economy would not deliver um, for the region and, you know, more, more globally. But, 
you know, to some degree, nothing changed fundamentally in terms of the structures afterwards. Is this going to be another turning point? Are we entering, you know, a, a, an era which we will call like the post-pandemic Balkan era, or, uh, <laughs> uh, or, or how, or, or is it is it just, uh, you know, an event um, which, at the end, will not be marking, you know, not be marking a before and after in the same way? What is your your take? Of course, I mean. You know, we all know that in the middle of it, it's impossible to make proper prediction, but it's kind of just sensing of, of where, where we're at at the moment. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, you, you, uh, um, uh, you, you said it 2008 was, was a, a first kind of um, opening, and, uh, uh, but the, the real change did not come. The only thing that, 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 uh, uh, that happened is that we uh, stopped dealing with this region as, as kind of transitional region. So the transition <laughs> was dropped from the vocabulary. It was clear we, are, we, are, we don't know where we are transiting. It's not the ideas we had in, back in the early 90s. And then we started using post-socialism a, a lot because we couldn't find really the, the, the right word for it. Just say neoliberalism, it's too general. And post-socialism somehow brought us back to socialism. So over the last 10 years, we questioned not only the, what happened after, so, uh, after socialism, but also what was happening during socialism. And that brought in a lot of interesting intellectual and, and political debates and somehow rehabilitated also certain ideas, especially about social justice, uh, that became quite, 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 impor quite important for many social, social actors. Uh, um, uh, on one hand, if this is not uh, the end of that period, so 30 years, although some could say 40 years uh, after the death of Tito, maybe this is like, it's, it will happen in a couple of days, so it's, we're going to test whether it's like a biblical thing of 40 years of, of uh, wandering in, in the desert, uh, uh, and, and who going to take us out and where, this is, this is a big question mark. But of course, we, uh, if nothing happens, then it, it means it's going to be even worse. So that the, 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 the worst forms of, uh, that we saw in post-socialism, such as uh, neoliberal model in peripheral country. This, is, this has a specific perverse twist here in, this, in these peripheral regions, uh, coupled with, with, uh, um, with new kind of uh, new energy for nationalism. Mm -hmm. So that would be the, the, really the worst outcome. Mm -hmm. uh, on the other hand, maybe it's time to change this post-conflict region is to post-pandemic, eh? <laughs> as you suggested. That would be at least a change of, of vocabulary. I somehow think that we're going to count this, especially because of what, is ha what, my, what will happen and what is coming, and uh, which will be uh, uh, horrible global consequences of this pandemic, as uh, an important milestone. And this will, of course, bring us back to, to re-examining our, our, our position. Uh, the recent past, last 30 years, but also the, the, the past from the 20th century, uh, it, it, it might, in, in the best case scenario, open up a, 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 a new kind of uh, take or, uh, on what is going on and, and where we might go. Uh, uh, from here. As we know, we've been lacking in this narrative, apart from nationalistic narrative that is not going into the future, mostly towards the past, and, and, and it doesn't open any, anything, apart from giving a sense of identity and, uh, and a sense of uh, being for, 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 for many people, we don't have an alternative narrative, really, that will open up uh, uh, kind of the, a future path to, so that we could at least envisage or uh, 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 the, the, uh, a different type of Balkans in the in the in the in the in the twenties of the twenty first century or in the thirties or ahead of us, and then somehow manage to to change a political vocabulary. I mean, certainly one thing which seems clear is that the the role of the state has returned, right? Because I mean, to some degree, the idea that you can privatize everything and that uh, you know, kind of the market will take care of it, has been proven to be at least in moments of crisis uh, flawed. Because you know, you need a state which uh, enforces rules. You need a state which has healthcare because it's not private healthcare but it's public healthcare. So in that sense, maybe uh, what we're seeing is certainly um, the significance of a functioning a functioning state, not a not a night watchman state, but a 
the functioning state, which has become at least visible as, as being beneficial. And I think we're also seeing that states which, are, which have kept a lot of these fu functions of a state have been doing a lot better uh, in dealing with the crisis than the states which have had to uh, uh, scale down uh, their capacities, right? So in a certain way, I would say one of, the, one of the lessons seems to be that functional, you know, functional states which have not given up too many powers to non-state actors seem to be better prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely, and 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 also also I think there will be a lot of pressure to have this type of functional state uh, with uh, elements of um, kind of uh, uh, with elements of welfare state, uh, the state that will invest into into public health, into into social care, uh, um, um, ideas that were deemed impossible uh, just a month ago are back on the table, such as basic income, for instance, and how to deal with this type of uh, crisis in order to save society. And uh, so it's true that there is an ideological shift towards people and less profit, so that profit cannot, private profit cannot really guarantee the happiness of all or the happiness of majority. Uh, and, and there will be a pressure, pressure uh, to, to do this. The problem is that people can, could, of course, um, pervert this idea and say exactly we need the state, we need the, we need the army, we need to protect borders and, and so on. And this is what I think going to happen in peripheral society, this new kind of idea that, uh, of, of um, this new operetta of sovereignism, of, of actually acting as if you are important, of acting as if you were a, a power that the uh, 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 the best case scenario will be that within societies people say okay well, we know what we want we know want to live um, a better life and also to have uh, but on the other hand we we know that we are too small so we have to see what's happening in in our region we have to go and talk to the neighbors without neighbors we cannot really protect resources and natural resources infrastructure and so on so we have to find a new way actually to, of being in this world that won't be as uh, uh, egoistic or or uh, xenophobic and nationalistic as it was before so that would be the best case scenario of course the worst case scenario you know good well thanks you basically given us two options <laughs> that's always uh, that's always good and no, i think it's good to, to think about that but let me last question because i think uh, in we all live in extraordinary um, circumstances at the moment you know you you are uh, you are also besides being an analyst and, a, and an academic you're also a writer and uh, as a writer let tell me how do you, how is it life you know how is it like you know, you've just published a novel not long ago. You probably mm -hmm. have a lot of uh, readings cancelled. What is it like, you know, living at the moment uh, for you? Mm -hmm. I mean, what does it mean, mm -hmm. you know, li living as a writer, as, a, as an intellectual in these circumstances mm -hmm. in a place like Belgrade? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, the, true, of course, we, we, we all made plans and, uh, and then there were a lot of readings and then the, 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 the book is out and also, also, also some travels and tours and uh, the, everything's been cancelled actually what is called normal literary life that you can go into a bookstore and buy my book it's not it's not has not been possible uh it will open up so people turn towards online but it's a different different model and it doesn't work in the same way we know that there will be problems that in the crisis people usually do not buy books <laughs> they go to hopefully to libraries or they they actually turn into their own bookshelves and see what to read there so in this respect uh, it's going to be a classical thing of a writer coming from some kind of peripheral country, but also true in the, in the, in the, in the big, big languages, uh, that you can't live off your writing. You cannot expect that actually art will bring you or creative work will bring you uh, enough revenue. Uh, uh, which means you have to do, do other things, academic work or <laughs> work in a bar or something like that, which all comes uh, uh, to, to, to the same, which means that the, the time you want to dedicate for, for your, to your art, you can't actually do it because you have to do other things. But of course, we know that many, many good stories uh, come out of this, and there will be a many, many good stories coming from, 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 from this crisis. Uh, uh, let's hope we'll be, we'll be able to tell them and also that, that they, they'll turn out good <laughs> uh, eventually, and that, that in a way, uh, we're gonna meet readers again. You never know who, who reads, books travel in, in, in extraordinary ways. 
Well, I think, you know, this is maybe a, a hopeful note to, to end on, Igor, because it's uh, making us think about the future of the day when we go and pick up books in the bookshop again and browse and uh, discuss them over a nice glass of wine or a cup of coffee. Um, so <laughs> thanks for, for joining me today and sharing your thoughts. Uh, th thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And of course, uh, good luck with with everything. Stay safe and healthy. <laughs>